Hello students, in this video we will discuss about the method of dimensional analysis for deriving any formula. As you can see one question here that the time period of a simple pendulum may depend on three factors as written in the question. It may depend on the mass of the bob m, the length of the string l and the acceleration due to gravity. So we have to derive the formula for the time period of this simple pendulum using dimensional analysis method. So let us start our analysis. Suppose the time period of the pendulum is capital T and it depends on it depends on three factors one is mass other is length and third is the acceleration due to gravity G. But we do not know we don't know that this time period depends on whether it depends on the square of the mass or cube of the length or square root of the g we do not know how this time period is going to depend on these three factors so because the powers of these three uh, physical quantities is unknown we will assume them to be x y and z so we have no idea about this so what we will do that let us assume that in this formula the power of mass is x, power of L is y and the power of g is z. So we are assuming that the time period depends on these three factors in this manner. Mass to the power x, length to the power y and g to the power z. But we know in dimensional analysis there is a rule that whenever we write an equation like this, the dimensions on the left hand side must be equal to the dimensions of the right hand side. So this is the trick of solving this question. First of all, to remove this symbol of the constant of proportionality, we will put here a constant of proportionality, k. And remaining thing as it is, it should be noted that this constant k is a dimensionless constant. It is dimensionless. Because why we are taking it dimensionless because we want to time period to depend only on these three factors which are having the dimensions. Now after we have written this equation what we will do next step is that write down the dimensions on LHS and RHS. So on the left hand side we can write down this step that taking dimensions on both sides. Taking the dimensions on both sides. So what we get by taking dimensions on the left hand side, we will write down like this square bracket of T, on this side square bracket K, then square bracket M to the power X, square bracket L to the power Y and square bracket G to the power Z. Square brackets means that we have to write down their dimensions. Now this time period T, as you know time period is simply time. So dimension of t will be only the time t. So we can write down on left hand left hand side m power 0, l power 0 and t power 1. Because time doesn't has this mass or length into it. So only time power 1. Then this k is a dimensionless constant. So for that there is no dimension. So we can simply write 1 into mass has dimension capital M. So raised to power x. L is the length of the pendulum, so dimension of length is capital L to the power y and G is acceleration due to gravity. You know that acceleration due to gravity has a dimension of L t power minus 2, L t power minus 2. So the whole thing raised to the power z. Then let us simplify the right hand side, left hand side will remain as it is m power 0, L power 0 t power 1 and here we will get m power x here we have l power y and here we have l power z so both the powers will get added l power y plus z and then lastly we are remaining here t t power minus 2 into z minus 2 into z now we have now written <coughs> the dimensions on both sides and the rule is that the dimensions of LHS and RHS must be equal. Now we see here, 
if we compare on both sides the powers of mass we we must say that x must be equal to 0 and the comparing the power of l with l or lhs and rhs y plus z must be equal to 0 and the comparing the powers of t minus 2z must be equal to 1 so let us write down our equations here by comparison of powers x must be equal to 0 from here y plus z is equal to 0 y plus z is equal to 0 and minus 2z the power of t is equal to this one power of t on this side minus 2z is equal to 1 now we have three equations here and we will solve these three equations together so value of x is already known x is equal to 0 remaining thing are two things here from the third equation here minus 2z is equal to 1 we can say from this equation we can get answer that z is equal to minus 1 by 2 okay so we got one more answer we got the value of x we got the value z remaining thing is y from the second equation you look at the second equation from the second equation one can say that y is equal to minus z sending the z on the right side but the value of z is minus 1 by 2 so minus of minus 1 by 2 will be plus 1 by 2 the so value of y is equal to plus 1 by 2 hence we have found we have now found the all the three values all the three powers that we've assumed in the beginning we assumed in the beginning that time period depends on mass to the power x length to the power y and acceleration due to gravity to the power z and now we have all the values so let us substitute all these values here and we can say that time period t will be equal to therefore here we can write down time period t is equal to k times of mass power 0 m power 0 l power y and the value of y is 1 by 2 so l power 1 by 2 and lastly g power z which is minus 1 by 2 g power minus 1 by 2 now we see how do we write down this final answer in a proper manner you see m to the power 0 will be 1 that actually implies that the time period does not depend on the mass it depends only on length of the simple pendulum and acceleration due to gravity <clears throat> this final answer can be written as t is equal to k times of l power 1 by 2 means square root of l and the g power minus 1 by 2 let us bring the g in the derivative so it will become g power 1 by 2 that is nothing but the square root of g hence finally we can write out that answer is t is equal to here let me write the answer t is equal to k times of root of l by g this is the final answer that time period of a simple pendulum depends on the square root of l by g what about this constant k if you already know the answer that the time period of a simple pendulum is given by 2 pi root l by g we know this answer let me write somewhere here t is equal to 2 pi root l by g this we can uh, see in some other chapter in a simple harmonic motion that the constant k is actually 2 pi but unfortunately by this method of dimensional analysis we cannot find the value of k reason is that dimensional analysis can give us only dimensional answers but we in the beginning only we assume that k is a non-dimensional number it is dimensionless so how can dimension dimension method give us the answer for dimensionless quantity that is why we couldn't find the value k so k will remain as a constant as it is and we can say this will be our answer using the dimensional analysis thank you for watching the video